Let's go over what you will need to study for your unit test on classification and taxonomy. We have two sets of notes for this unit. One is the foldable introducing classification and Corollis Linnaeus, as well as how to write a scientific name, how to use a cladogram, and how to use a dichotomous key. And then the other set of notes, this chart that goes over the six kingdoms of life, three domains of life, and then the basics about their cell structure, cell number, and energy metabolism, etc. On the back of these notes, you'll remember are four useful Venn diagrams. It might be easier for you to remember the information this way. In your labs and projects section, you have the classification introductory web quest, as well as the pasta dichotomous key activity, if you chose to complete that in class. And as always, you have your unit portfolio on classification and your classification glossary. As always, you can find a bunch of useful resources if you log into Student View or Phoenix. You can find full copies and blank copies of the notes under the tab, What's the Homework and What do I Need to Study? I have some review games posted under the tab, Review Games, and you can find links to this and other helpful videos under the link, Miss E's Videos. What is classification? Classification in life science is a way of organizing life into categories or groups that makes it easier to appreciate evolutionary relationships, predict connections, and answer questions about known and unknown species. Our modern system of classification is based on the work of Swedish botanist and zoologist Carl Linnaeus. Linnaeus changed his name from Carl to Carolus in his writing because he often was writing in Latin, the language of scientists at the time. Linnaeus wrote about, observed, and classified many species of plants and animals. In fact, those were his two main categories of life, plants and animals. Although we recognize more categories of life today than just plants and animals, we still follow Linnaeus's convention of using two names or a binomial nomenclature when we are classifying organisms. The study of classification is called taxonomy. Our modern system of classification and taxonomy observes eight different levels, or taxa. Domain is the broadest category, while species is the most narrow, or specific. You can remember the meaning of species as one unique kind of animal because it kind of sounds like the word specific or special. Although there are about 9 million living species on Earth, there are only three domains because each of these 9 million species fits into each of these ascending taxa until we get to our three domains. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Going from most specific to most general, we have species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, kingdom, and domain. Going from most general to most specific, we have domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. So how do you write a scientific name in our system of binomial nomenclature, which means two name naming system? There are a certain set of rules to follow to make sure you're writing the scientific name correctly. The first word is the name of the organism's genus. Second, most specific level of organization. It's always written with a capital letter to start. The second word is the species name, our most specific taxon. This is always written with a lowercase letter. The last rule is that it's written in italics. Now, we can abbreviate the genus name with just a single capital letter, but you only want to do that after you've specified the full scientific name at least once in whatever you are writing. Let's check and see if some of these names are written correctly. Here's the scientific name for a fennec fox. It is italicized and the genus is capitalized, but you'll notice that the species is also capitalized, so this is incorrect. Here's the scientific name for a giraffe. Again, it is italicized, but we would need to capitalize that genus name to make it formatted correctly. Do you see what's wrong with this one? It's kind of tricky to tell with handwriting, but this should be italicized to correctly format the scientific name of the monarch butterfly. Is this one formatted correctly? Yep, we've got it italicized, we've got a capital letter for the genus and lowercase for the species. 
Our three domains of life are archaea, bacteria, and eukarya. All living things fit into one of these three domains. Our next level down is kingdom. Although there are three domains, there are six kingdoms of life. Bacteria, protists, animals, plants, fungi, and archaea. The kingdom archaea or archaebacteria is in the domain archaea and are believed to be some of the oldest species of life on earth. Archaea live in very extreme environments, such as very salty water or deep in ocean trenches. Another very old kingdom of life is in the domain bacteria, and these are bacteria. They get kind of a bad reputation for causing disease. Though many of them can be pathogens, some of them are very helpful. In fact, you have about four pounds of bacteria in and on your body helping out your immune system. Organisms in the domains archaea and bacteria are prokaryotic. This means that they lack a nucleus and they also lack membrane-bound organelles. In the domain eukarya, there are four kingdoms. All of them are eukaryotic, which means that they have a nucleus and membrane-bound organelles. Fungi are heterotrophs, meaning that they cannot make their own food. They grow on what they eat, often causing it to decompose. Animals are also heterotrophic. They cannot make their own food and have to consume other organisms for energy. Plants are autotrophs. They can produce their own food using the process called photosynthesis. And last but certainly not least are the protists. Some protists are heterotrophs and some are autotrophs. Some protists are similar to fungi, some similar to animals, and some similar to plants. It's a very diverse category of life, but all of them live in or near water. Let's examine in more detail some of the similarities and differences between these different kingdoms of life. Let's first examine cell structure. Cells can either be prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Our eukaryotic kingdoms are fungi, animals, plants, and protists while our prokaryotic kingdoms are archaea and bacteria. There's no overlap because there's no way that an organism can be both prokaryotic, which means not having nucleus, and eukaryotic, which means having a nucleus. Now let's examine number of cells. Some organisms are unicellular, meaning each organism is made out of just one cell. Others are multicellular. Organisms are made out of more than one cell. And in some of our kingdoms of life, there are organisms that are unicellular and there are organisms that are multicellular. Bacteria and archaea only exist as unicellular organisms. Plants and animals only exist as multicellular organisms. But some organisms in the kingdom Protista and some organisms in the kingdom Fungi can be unicellular and some can be multicellular. It depends on the species in these two kingdoms. Now let's compare how organisms in the different kingdoms get their energy. Some organisms are strictly autotrophs, meaning that they are producers. They can create their own food. Some are heterotrophs, meaning they cannot produce their own food and must consume other organisms for food. We also call heterotrophs consumers. In some kingdoms, there are organisms that are autotrophs as well as heterotrophs. And in rare occasions, there are organisms that can produce their own food sometimes and can consume other organisms sometimes. Fungi and animals are always heterotrophic. They cannot produce their own food. Plants can always produce their own food. In the case of protists, bacteria, and archaea, it would depend on the species that you are examining. Some species of protists are consumers, some are producers, some can do both. Some species of archaea and bacteria are producers and some species are consumers. It depends on which species you are examining. And last but not least, we will examine how different organisms in these different kingdoms reproduce. Some organisms will reproduce strictly by means of asexual reproduction, which means they can copy themselves without the genetic material of any other organisms. Other organisms strictly use sexual reproduction, meaning that new life is formed from the genetic material of two different organisms. And as we've seen a few times so far, there are some kingdoms of life in which it would depend on the species. Archaea and bacteria strictly use asexual reproduction. 
animals strictly use sexual reproduction, and in the case of protists, plants, and fungi, it varies from species to species. One of the important classification and taxonomy tools we learned about in this unit was the dichotomous key. A dichotomous key uses a series of paired statements or questions to narrow down possibilities and reach an identification of a certain organism. Here's an example dichotomous key. Here's my organism. If gray, go to step two, okay? If aquatic and puffy, it's a weddell seal. If it's terrestrial and scary, it's a gray wolf. I guess this is a gray wolf. Here's my next organism. If gray, go to two. If not gray, go to three. If black, plastic, and non-living, sunglasses. If green and spiky, cactus. This was an easy one, but you get the idea. Another taxonomy tool is the cladogram. This is like a big family tree showing the recent and not so recent evolutionary history and relationship between species of interest. Each vertex on a cladogram represents a common, shared, extinct ancestor between two species. And the closer together two organisms are on this diagram, the more closely they are related and the more recently they evolved into different species. Hopefully this review has helped clear up any confusion that you have, and now you can feel like you can really live up to your species name, Homo sapiens, or wise person. Hopefully after watching this, you can feel very wise on the topics of classification and taxonomy. Now's the part where I'm going to review everything. Very fast. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Going from most specific to most general, we have species, genus, family, order, class, phylum, kingdom, and domain. Going from most general to most specific, we have domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Our three domains of life are archaea, bacteria, and eukarya. All living things fit into one of these three domains. So how do you write a scientific name in our system of binomial nomenclature, which means two-name naming system? The first word is the name of the organism's genus second most specific level of organization. It's always written with a capital letter to start. The second word is the species name, our most specific taxon. This is always written with a lowercase letter. The last rule is that it's written in italics. One of the important classification and taxonomy tools we learned about in this unit was the dichotomous key. A dichotomous key uses a series of paired statements or questions to narrow down possibilities and reach an identification of a certain organism. Another taxonomy tool is the cladogram. This is like a big family tree showing the recent and not so recent evolutionary history and relationship between species of interest. Each vertex on a cladogram represents a common, shared, extinct ancestor between two species. And the closer together two organisms are on this diagram, the more closely they are related and the more recently they evolved into different species.